All right, guys, so we're on our last video, which will covering that, which will be dynamic pack. But just as a disclaimer, I've been looking through some of the past videos that I've done, and um, I realized that I haven't been creating the object groups and the objects in the correct place. Now, this is the way I do it in the real world, but there's many ways to skin a cat. But sometimes you have to realize it might be better to actually skin a cat with a knife than rather than like a spoon or an iron or something. So let's get on. And talking about dynamic pack, which is often called NAT overload, this is the most used version of NAT. But luckily for us, it's also the easiest one to configure. And what it does is it translates the inside network or the higher security level network subnet to a single public IP address. So what you'll have is like a lot of private addresses on the LAN and they all go through to a single public IP address. And this is a way that if your ISP only allocated you a single IP address or your organization can't afford to buy multiple public IP addresses for each individual user, then people or users on the LAN can still manage to get access to their favorite cat videos through YouTube or through the internet. And the way it does this is by translating the IP addresses, but also changing the port number to be different for each private IP address. So let's have a look at our topology. And the first way I will do it, I'll go from the inside to the DMZ. So we can see that we've got some loopbacks here. I'll add some additional loopbacks. So, and I think I've got these open already. So yeah, I've got, so it'll be inside CLI to DMZ. They'll be, they'll be the three that I do first. So let's do that on the CLI. Let's have a look at the interfaces that we've currently got to so show IP interface brief. And I'll be using these loopback addresses. So can I ping from this loopback to 10.1.1.2, which will be the DMZ router's IP address using 30.1.1.1? Yes, I am able to. So let me add some additional loopbacks interface loopback two and interface loopback three. I should have done the no synchronous, I mean, sorry, login synchronous. So for interface loopback three, the IP address will be 30.1.1.3. All right, now we're going to jump onto our firewall and do the, let's open that up again, it closed. So our CLI file we, firewall we're looking for. All right, so show run NAT. And I've deleted all our previous NAT and our previous objects, but I'm just double checking. Okay. So let's say object, our object will be the network. It's a network object. I'm gonna say the inside LAN. And we're going to use the subnet of 30.1.1.0. Let's just make it a 248 on the end, which is a slash 29. We're not gonna be using more than eight IP addresses. Now, the important thing to know is that you don't exit out of the object here. The NAT statement is done here. And when I was first doing NAT, the most confusing thing I had is the order of where you put the interfaces in the parentheses. And if you think of it, it's just the way that it's being NATed from the point of view of the IP addresses that are being NATed. So in this case, the IP addresses that are being NATed are the inside LAN loopbacks. So inside will go first. So we say NAT from the inside going to the DMZ and we're going to say dynamic. Now there's two ways that we can do this and I will show you the second way on the ASDM, but we could either use the firewall interface, which will be 10.1.1.1 and all private IP addresses will be NATed using that IP address or we could put our own IP address in the same subnet but I will use the interface first and I think that's it so NAT inside DMZ dynamic interface press enter let's do our show x late there's nothing at the moment so let's ping from our loopback so do ping 10.1.1.2 source of 30.1.1.1 30.1.1.2. Okay, there's an issue there. Let's have a look at the X slate first. So show X slate. Okay, so it did do the X slate, but I'm not actually seeing the ping, which is a problem. Let's see if it sees the third one. So dot three. 
So it is seeing two and three, but they're not pinging. And there's a few things that I'm going to fix the ping in a minute, but there's a few things that I want you to see here. First, you can see that we're using ICMP. It's coming from an inside address of 30.1.1.3, and it's with a port of 16, and it's being translated to 10.1.1.1 with a port of 16. You've got R, which means it's being, it's got a port mapping, and it's also I, which means it's dynamic here. But let's see if we can fix out why it's not pinging. So it's got to be something to do with the, I don't think it's an access list. So let's just have a look at that. Show run access list. It's nothing to do with an access list. I think it might have something to do with the routing. So let me do, do show run section router EIGRP. Ah, uh, okay. What it is, I've only advertised that particular network. So let me change that. If I say router EIGRP 100, I put a no here. I get rid of this network, which only allows 30.1.1.1. And then I put network 30.1.1.0.0.0.0.255. And let's see if that works now. So let me jump back on to, no, don't need to jump anywhere. Let me just do a ping from here. Do ping 10.1.1.2 from a source of 30.1.1.1. That works. Dot two. Yes, the pings are working now. And dot three. And go back over to our CLI. And let's look at the xlate. Show xlate. Guys, I have a request from you. If you're enjoying the free content, I'm looking to increase my subscriber count to 4,000 subscribers by June. But I can only do that if you give me the play special. Do you want to know what the play special is? Press like and yeah, subscribe. Okay, back to the video. Yeah, and we see that it's come up with all three different port numbers. So port 17, port 18 for dot two, and port 19 for dot three. And we can see that it was a ping that we actually used. Let's try and actually see what will happen if we telnet from the inside or HTTP. So if I exited out of this, exited, and I said telnet 10.1.1.2 with a source from the source of loopback zero. So it's refused. Let's just enable telnet on our DMZ. So if I say line, VTY04, transport input Telnet, and let's give it a password. All right, now let's jump back over to our inside and do that again. So Telnet 10. Oh, yeah, that's all I should be. Telnet has worked. Now, if we jump onto the CLI and we say show XLay, you can see now that the protocol has changed to TCP where it's coming from 30.1.1.1. The port number has changed, but we still got R and I. Okay, that's it for the command line. Let's try and do the same thing going from our DMZ to the outside on the ASDM. And what I was saying earlier is when you want to come create an object, instead of going into access rules and doing it the way I was doing it before, just come down to objects and go to network objects and then you click add and this will add your network object. So we're going to add a network object. So I'm going to call this our DMZ LAN. Our type will be a network. IP address will be coming from the DMZ loopbacks, which are on the 2.2.2.0 network on a slash 24. Actually, we have a slash 24 here. I think, actually, okay, let's have a look at if there's any other things that we need to do in our NAT. Oh yeah, we need to, I think we add automatic address translation, not static, what will we use? Oh yeah, we're going to use dynamic PAT. Now, instead of using the interface, I'm going to use a bespoke address and I'm going to use the address of 209.10.12.40. And we're going to go in advance. And now we know that our source is going to be from the DMZ because we're doing it from the point of our LAN and it's going to our outside. Yeah, that should make sense. I'll have a look when it shows me the output in a minute. Okay, let's apply that. 
Let's see if it goes into our nap rules first. Yeah, it has. All right, let's apply that. Object network, subnet of this, NAT DMZ, outside, dynamic, 209.10.12.40. Let's send that. Now let's jump onto our DMZ and do a ping. So from the DMZ, do ping 209.12, and is it dot ten dot ten dot twelve dot two? Okay, we could ping that, but that's not what I want it. I want to source it from two dot two dot two dot thirty two. That's the first one, and from dot thirty three, and do a ping from dot thirty and thirty one. Now, when I run onto the command line of the ASDM, let me just open that and I do a show X late, we see nothing. Why is that? Maybe I have to do those pings again. Do ping 209.10.12.2 ASDM show X late. Okay, it's, it's actually come up now. So we're pinging from 2.2.2.31 to the outside address. It's being translated to 209.10.12.40. You can see that we're using ping ICMP. It's a port mapping and it's dynamic. Let's do a couple more of those and we'll end the video there. So, dot 30, 31, 32, and 33. I'm expecting to see four. Jump back onto our ASDM command line. Do a show X late. One, two, three, four with the port maps and the mapping. All right, that's it for NAT. I will see you in the next video.